Well, hello, church. Thanks so much for joining us on chapter one here of Gentle and Lowly. The title is His Very Heart, and we're going to be diving into Matthew 11, verse 29. So we'll, we'll talk, I'm going to give a summary of the chapter, and then I'm going to have a discussion with a couple other people about this chapter. Um, and so, yeah, this, this chapter is rooted in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, where it says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And Dane Ortland points out, he says, in the one place in the Bible where the Son of God pulls back the veil and lets us peer way down into the core of who he is, we are not told that he is austere and demanding in heart. We are not told that he is exalted and dignified in heart. We are not even told that he is joyful and generous in heart. Letting Jesus set the terms, his surprising claim is that he is gentle and lowly in heart. And he goes on to talk about in the book about how the Old Testament, the New Testament, when it talks about the heart, it's talking about the very core of a person, the very center of a person, the, the place that motivates us and guides us and directs us. And when that comes to the very heart of Jesus, he says that he is gentle and lowly. And, and Dane explains those two things what gentleness means, what lowliness means. He says, he says it means that he's meek and humble. It's gentleness. Jesus is not trigger happy, not harsh, reactionary, easily exasperated. He is the most understanding person in the universe. The posture most natural to him is not a pointed finger, but open arms. And so he spends this whole chapter basically telling us that Jesus is gentle and lowly. That, that's at the most core of who Jesus is. And then he explains why that's so important for us. He talks about how Jesus is accessible. He says, you don't need to unburden or collect yourself and then come to Jesus. Your very burden is what qualifies you to come. And so Jesus by being gentle and lowly, he's accessible. He says, come to me, all who are heavy, or all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so he talks about how what qualifies us to go to Jesus isn't that we have to clean ourselves up, but the very fact that we're weighed down and burdened, that qualifies us to go to Jesus because he is gentle and lowly in heart. And so our response to him uh, yeah, it can be to, to, to go to him and to receive rest for the burdens that we have. Um, and Dane also talks about how this is important because this might not be how we usually think of Jesus. It might not be the first thing that comes to mind that we think, oh, he's gentle and lowly. But that's exactly how Jesus describes himself as gentle and lowly. And one of the things Dane talks about is just the danger of projecting our own views on Jesus that come from kind of our own natural instincts, the, the instincts of our flesh. Uh, and so again and again in this chapter, Dane is pointing us back to what the true heart of Jesus is and what that means for us. So we're going to spend some time now asking some questions about this chapter. Um, and I'm joined here by Pastor Mike and Pastor Mark. And so, yeah, I'm just going to jump into the first question here. It says, Jesus describes his heart as gentle and lowly. Is this surprising in any way? And if so, why? I, I think this is surprising in, um, in a couple of ways. Maybe to a lot of people, especially if you're, if you're reading through the, the, the Bible, when I mean, you get through the whole Old Testament and there's this whole idea of kind of separation between God and, and man and, and God... You know, he has the tabernacle and the temple, and he kind of makes a way for man to get close to him, but, but it's always through uh, the priesthood and through um, kind of, you know, standing outside, and only the priest can go into the Holy of Holies, and, and there's a separation. And then Jesus comes in the New Testament, God kind of, you know, covered in flesh, and here we have Jesus just moving toward people and, and humbly kind of coming to them and, and serving them. And, and I think this is, um, is quite surprising when you... Uh, think about kind of how man used to relate to God. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I mean, the incarnation is surprising because um, you have God's transcendence, that he is other, like Mike said, that he's different, that he's holy, he dwells in a high and lofty place, um, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Mm. 
yeah. you know, you, you can't, like you told Israel, not, not to go, don't, don't even touch Mount Sinai. Right. And so there is, it is very true. Uh, it's just as true that God is holy and unapproachable by sinners. Yeah. Uh, but, but then also in the Old Testament, he's saying, and I also dwell with those who have a lowly and contrite heart, right? Mm-hmm. He dwell, dwells with sinners, people who are broken and humble. And, and that's surprising. We don't, you just don't see those two things come together uh, ever in, right. in this way. And, and then also I just appreciated how Dane said in page 23, this is not how we intuitively think of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. We project onto Jesus our skewed instincts about how the world works. Mm-hmm. So powerful people uh, are hard to get to. Yeah. Right. And, and Jesus surprises us. Yeah, yeah that's mm. right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, another question to consider um, so why is this important for us to know this truth about Jesus' heart? How does this impact the Christian's relationship with him? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot we could say, but one may not even be a direct answer to that, but one reason I think it's really important for us to know this about Jesus' heart is to know how important gentleness is hmm to his for his people Mm -hmm. in our hearts and i think dane in this chapter talks about how he heard from his dad his how his dad pointed out maybe it was maybe it was in the introduction how his dad once pointed out that the one time jesus kind of rips open his chest and says look into my heart he says here's what is there i'm gentle Mm -hmm. um and that's that's a, a surprising right and one of the fruit of the spirit is gentleness. Mm-hmm. And I think in our culture, probably in most cultures in the history of the world, and especially among men, uh, gentleness is not something that we celebrate, that we yeah. treasure, that we prize. Mm-hmm. Uh, people want leaders who are uh, powerful, uh, always you know, on top, strong. Um, and, and so gentleness is not usually Surprised. And so I think it's really important to see how, how central it is to Jesus for our own character and to know how important it is for us to be gentle. Right. Yeah. I think also in Jesus, you know, through, through the Gospels and as we, we talk through this book, and, and, and Dane points out so well that, that Jesus is constantly moving towards sinners. And, and I think the natural inclination, especially when you think of, like Mark said, powerful people who are hard to get to or, you know, who have security teams and things like this or... Uh, they have power, and oftentimes we see in the world those leaders uh, abusing their power and using their power to mm-hmm. suppress those who are, uh, you know, kind of who they see beneath them. Uh, but Jesus is gentle, and as he moves towards us, uh, those who are sinful or, or who might have something to hide might, might run from Jesus. Whereas if, if we know that Jesus is gentle and he's, and he's lowly and he's, and he's kind, then that will encourage us as believers to, even when we fail, uh, to, to, to move towards him and, 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 and be embraced by him and his gentleness. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I feel like <clears throat> knowing that Jesus is gentle and lowly, it, it makes me feel like I don't need to clean myself up to go to him, um, that I don't need to have it all together, that I don't have to be powerful in order to go to him. It's actually my weakness that qualifies me to go to him. Um, and and it, it also just has this effect on me where I'm just, I'm in awe of Jesus. I mean, mm-hmm. Uh, just his humility, like he is so powerful. He mm-hmm. is so glorious and holy. And, and we see those things in other parts of scripture and, and they're definitely there and we should definitely pay attention to them. Um, but the fact that he kind of here highlights his gentleness and lowliness, it's like, wow, like, yeah, it, it makes him a beautiful savior that I want to run to. Mm-hmm. And, and when I'm burdened, it just makes me feel like, oh, like, yeah, I have a gentle and lowly Savior who, who wants to take this burden, mm. who's inviting me to come under his yoke so mm. that he can carry it with me. Um, so yeah, it's just, Jesus, his, his gentle and lowliness is amazing. Mm. Um, which raises another question. So Jesus is gentle and lowly, but does everybody experience that? Um, just, yeah, everybody in the world, do, do they experience that? Why or why not? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. In, in Matthew, in Matthew 11, where Jesus, it says, at that time he stood up and said and cried out, yeah. come to me all you who are uh, um, weary, weary, weary and heavy laden, he- and, heavy laden yeah. and I will give you rest. Uh, right before that is when he's crying out, woe, 
on these cities that mm. have not received him and his disciples and saying the wrath of God is going to come on them. And so God, the Holy Spirit, inspired these two texts right next to each other, mm -hmm. I think, to help us from getting confused, from helping us to not, it's, it's almost impossible to just zone in on just the wrath or just the gentleness. And so Ortland here says, this is not who he is to everyone indiscriminately on page 21. This is who he is for those who come to him, who take his yoke upon mm -hmm. them, who cry to him for help. Mm -hmm. um, so he is this for those who are penitent and who embrace his grace, those who are repentant. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same call that, that John the Baptist makes when he's preparing the way for Jesus. See, it's interesting in, in the book of Luke, uh, he, he, he retells the story of, of John the Baptist and, and John is saying like all these harsh things like he calls them you know brood of vipers who warned you to, to run from the wrath that is to come and, and, and he talks about all these things that they need to repent and then after he, there's all this harsh language that says and then John continued to uh, preach to them the good news and you're like how do, how do these two things fit together and, and the good news is that there is, there is this wrath that's there. There is this side of, of God that, that, that comes down and judges sin, but Jesus gently and lowly comes to those who, as Mark said, humble themselves and who submit themselves uh, under his authority, and uh, he kindly and gently uh, forgives them of their sins. It's good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I think that's important for us to have have this understanding of Jesus, like a, a full view of him, like we're emphasizing his gentle and lowliness here, but like I read in Revelation 19 this morning and this picture of Jesus coming back riding on a white horse mm. to judge the world. And so he's not gentle and lowly when it comes to sinners who are rebelling against him and who reject his reign and basically are saying, we want nothing to do with you. Uh, his gentle and lowliness is given to those who, yeah, come in repentance and realize that you know, that we are sinners, that we've rebelled against God, that we, that we need him, that we can't save ourselves. And so I think that's helpful, which kind of gets to the last question, which is, why is it important for us to read our Bibles when it comes to how we see Jesus? Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I think reading the scriptures is super important because uh, as, as Dane points out, um, oftentimes we'll project our own ideologies about who we think God is or who Jesus is based upon you know, how our fathers treated us or how we relate to other people. And when we read the scriptures, it is God's revelation of himself to us. And it allows us to know exactly who he is and what he's really like. And, and I think oftentimes it, it goes contrary to uh, kind of our natural inclinations and thinkings. And it's, yeah. it's super surprising and just um, you know, so wonderful to, yeah. to read and get to know God through his word. That's yeah, good. yeah, it's good. I, and, and that's one of the things I think we're, as pastors, um, just jealous to keep putting in front of us, especially mm -hmm. as we're doing like a book study right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't do this that often, call the whole church to a book. I mean, and, and before we did this in January, we, in December, we said, get your Bible reading plan. Yeah and be reading through the whole counsel of God mm -hmm. this year. And so really, if I'd say to anybody watching on the video, if, if you have a choice between this or your Bible each day and you don't have time for both, just go to the Bible. Yeah, right. That's yeah. right. Uh, we do think this is a, a faithful, not inerrant, not perfect in every way teaching, but we do think this is a faithful um, teaching of God's word from a faithful teacher of God's word, and so it's helpful. But we need to make sure we're looking and letting Jesus speak for himself the way the Holy Spirit in inspired it um, and letting him shape our thinking about him. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I think I think of a quote, I think it was John Piper who said, like, you can judge how good a book is by how much it makes you want to go read the book. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's our hope, is that as we read this, like, it'll make us want to read our Bibles even more and mm -hmm. just plumb the treasures of God's word. Um, and Dane kind of makes a point similar to this, uh, what we've been talking about at the end. So I want to just close by reading a little bit on page 24. He says, Christ does not cringe at reaching out and touching dirty sinners and numb sufferers. Such embrace is precisely what he loves to do. He cannot bear to hold back. We naturally think of Jesus touching us in the way a little boy reaches out to touch a slug for the first time. 
face screwed up, cautiously extending an arm, giving a yelp of disgust upon contact and instantly withdrawing. Mm. We picture the risen Christ approaching us with a severe and sour disposition, as Godwin, Goodwin says. And then he says, this is why we need a Bible. Our natural intuition can only give us a God like us. The God revealed in the scripture deconstructs our intuitive predilections and startles us with one whose infinitude of perfections is matched by his infinitude of gentleness. Indeed, his perfections include his perfect gentleness. Mm. So church, I hope that was encouraging to you, encourage you to keep reading your Bibles and keep benefiting from this book. Thank you.